Welcome to the Stories of Gold. I am joined today by Marsha O'Malley. And Marsha is a pro with this video stuff. So I'm looking forward to our conversation and talking about how we might engage with our audience more fully with you via video. And in this post, semi-post-pandemic world, we have all probably gotten fairly used to at least the idea of being on video, but the idea of being on video and the practice of being on video are two different things. And to help us navigate those sometimes uncharted waters, I'm delighted to, to be joined by Marcia today. Steve, Hello, Marcia. Great to be here. Just great to be here. It's, it's not. I can't think of a better time since I've been alive when it's been great to be connected to video. I mean, I think you'd agree with that. There's uh, no more compelling need to use video, and um, we have the technology now that we never had before, right in the palm of our hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's interesting. I hear a lot that people are saying how disconnected they feel from other people. And, you know, especially, and it's honestly very understandable that we, we struggled to be connected when we have been given varying degrees of stay at home and keep the door shut and all that kind of thing. And, you know, as human beings, we're social creatures, but when we're told to shut the doors and put on masks and, you know, put on gloves and everything and keep social distance, which I'm not against by any means, but, but it just creates additional barriers that we already have a tendency to build up around ourselves and are between ourselves and our audiences. So how does video help us break down those barriers? How can we use video to engage more fully with our audience? Well, I think one of the most important things to remember right now is that uh, video and you know being able to be using the technology of zoom in particular right now um, it's about the next best thing to actually being able to be next to someone and talking to them in person and you can do several things to enhance the intimacy of that conversation you know one of the things i see happen most often in meetings that um, creates a layer you know, you're talking about the various layers that create that barrier. So one of them is that people don't look at their camera when they're talking. <laughs> um, yes. You know, they're looking down like there's a big difference between me looking at you on my screen. Right. And up on my camera. Absolutely. You really feel like I'm talking to you, you know, when I'm looking in the camera. So paying attention to things like that and paying attention to um, your delivery you know what is your message making sure that when you are whether it's a meeting or you're doing a presentation that you have a much more conversational tone to what you're doing you know you're not on a stage with five thousand mm. people right now um i mean i should correct that there are some people like tony robbins you know has had you know, his 30,000 people connected on Zoom, you know, through his own events, but even he will talk about what a difference it is to be utilizing the video technology as opposed to being on a stage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have just different ways of relating to the audience and relating to each other. So I think it's really important to stay focused on, you know, what, what is the conversation you're having? What is the presentation you're giving and make it as intimate as you can, starting with talking to your audience directly through your camera. Mm. We're not used to that because like I'm looking at this and I'm seeing in my peripheral vision, you're nodding your head. I can tell you're smiling occasionally. I'm used to seeing, you know, body language and playing off of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that it takes a little bit of practice and it's a skill that you develop over time. It's not something that just out of the shoot, you're going to be able to do 
100% effectively, but the more you do it, the more you'll feel comfortable with it. Um, you know, I, I set up my screen so that I can see as much of you as possible as I'm looking into my camera. So it's not like I, uh, you know, would have to turn, you know, to get a glimpse of you or uh, any other audience. So there are ways to just sort of structure things to, to make it more doable, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And it's honestly one of the thing I've, things I have had to learn how to play with. Mm -hmm. Because for one thing, talking to the little camera there and keeping my eyes on that rather than, you know, down here to my left, where your image really is, mm -hmm. is, is proving, has proven challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a member of Toastmasters for years. And one of the things, even in a, a live environment that I received feedback on a number of times was, you know, making eye contact with my audience members, right? And it's one thing to ha make eye contact with your audience members when, you know, those eyes that you're making contact with are right there in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're making eye contact and you have to do more imagine the eyes there rather than the eyes that you would normally see, it's another barrier that we have to, to pass through and mm -hmm. it can be challenging. It can. And, you know, one thing I've done in the past that's a lot of fun is I <clears throat> took a picture of my son and my son has this infectious smile. <laughs> uh, anyone who knows him, if you're watching, you can, uh, you know, affirm as well. But uh, I took a photo of him that was, oh, just a square, maybe about, you know, three by three, something like that. And I cut out his eyes, you know, I printed it on paper, mm -hmm. cut out his eyes. And I taped that onto my camera so that where the eyes would have been is where the lens of my camera was. So every time I looked up, first of all, there was an actual human being kind of looking at me anyway. And he had a smile. So it always reminded me, you know, to just stop frowning, you know, mm, attention, yes. be careful. So, you know, I share that with anyone who thinks that that might be helpful. You know, if, if you're struggling with this too, just find a picture or maybe it's your animal. If you've got, you know, a dog or a cat or a lizard or I don't know what, something that has a very friendly face, you know, go ahead and make a copy of that picture, cut out the eyes and stick it up on your camera. I think Absolutely. And I did something similar when I was just trying to find a way to make the camera more uh, more like a human. And <laughs> <laughs> I found a couple of images on, I don't know, on Splash or Pixabay or wherever, mm -hmm. uh, and printed out the, the photo of, of those faces and then just made a little kind of a, a raccoon mask type of thing so that I could cut out a space in the middle for the camera and then just lay it down on top of uh, the top of my laptop. <laughs> And I don't use that anymore, but I used it pretty much every time I got on to the camera for quite a while, just so that I could get used to looking in that space. Sure. And by making it more personable, making it more of something that that I found attractive and, and engaging, it helped me to, to break down some of that barrier that I found with mm -hmm. The, this kind of artificial environment that we often find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's great. And I think, you know, some other things I'd suggest is just, you know, when you're attending different meetings or different events, um, really be a participant. You know, we all have a million things going on in the background. I know I'm totally guilty of multitasking during meetings and you know if, if you're attending anything with me and you see my camera muted it's because i have to take care of something and i mm. don't want to be looking busy in the background and you know distract folks but um really be present you know be there and listen to the person who's talking or if it's a panel or if it's a, a group activity um and you know engage as much as you can on your end 
put information in the chat. Maybe you have a comment that you'd like to make, or, or perhaps as they're talking, you have a question. You know, sometimes people are shy about asking a question, but if you type it in the chat, you don't have to say it, you know, you, you don't have to actually be on camera with it, but you get your voice extended. And, and it also probes the mind of the person who's presenting. Mm. It lets them know that the audience is listening. It helps them to know, you know, what, what is it that they're really uh, processing? You know, what information are they taking in? What isn't becoming clear to them? So it, it works in a nice reciprocal way. You're giving feedback to the speaker, but you're also uh, engaging. And, and what I find too, when I'm in that position, if I start uh, entering information in the chat, whether it's questions or comments or whatever, I start engaging with you know someone else. There's one or two other people that might share my opinion or they might have some insight into the question that I have. And so you start building you know, on a, a little minor scale, some relationships. Mm, yes. And I think we need to look at it from that angle. We're not in there in a box in a silo. You know, you, you have to reach out. You know, you relationships don't just happen to you. They happen with you and with other mm. people. So it, it takes two to tango and you need to do your part of it. You know, and then presenters have their own, you know, uh, set of tools that they can use to engage the audience as well. But, you know, as a participant and as someone who might be feeling um, that level of isolation still at this point, because we're doing so much online still, even though we're opening up a little bit, uh, you know, you, you got to do your part too. You know, we, we can't be passive observers and then expect the world to come to us and feel like we got a big hug, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's a really good point. I like the way you expressed that relationships aren't created for you. They're created with you, that, that it's, mm -hmm. it's a participatory exercise. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and especially when we're separated by miles and by wires and so forth, it can be challenging to do that. But if we... Uh, I think there are ways that, that we can close that distance, you know, whether that distance is, uh, you know, technical or if it's geographical. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because I mean, the advantage of, you know, this time frame that we've just been experiencing and we will continue to be going through for a while is that we've had the opportunity to connect to people globally in a way that we never have before. Mm, yes. And when you talk about building, you know, relationships, making connections, you know, building business opportunities, I mean, the sky has been open for us and the people who have embraced it are doing exceptionally well. The people who squawked about it and dragged their feet are the ones who, you know, some businesses of theirs have closed mm. or they have had pity parties for themselves. And um, there's a lot of things to, to be sad about. <laughs> there are a lot of things to be concerned about, but there's a lot of things to celebrate. And um, I choose celebration over, over anything else right now. I mm. really feel like we have an opportunity as businesses and entrepreneurs in particular to be able to do business in a whole new way and on a whole new scale. And if you're not embracing it, and if you're still fearful of the video technology, um, we got to have a talk because <laughs> there's it's just remarkable you know i i know several of the networking professional networking groups that i belong to are internationally based and so for the first time you know our members are able to attend meetings across the globe mm -hmm. you know who could afford the travel and the time before we couldn't Right. But now we've been able to do that. I mean, it's remarkable. So there are opportunities there to not only, you know, be in the awe of the moment of being in, in the same room with people from all over the world, but we're able to talk about business on a whole new level. Mm -hmm. you know, how do we grow and develop it? And how can we help each other? And 
how do we lift each other, you know, as we're all trying to make our way through this, this crazy pandemic. Um, I just think it's a unique opportunity. And I, I think uh, video has been the key tool to make that happen. And if anything, I have felt blessed to have had the knowledge base I have and the technical skills I have to be able to help people be out there and, and use it, you know? Absolutely. One of the things that I had the benefit of doing because of the situation we find ourselves in currently is back in January, I started to build a Toastmasters club that wasn't geographically based. It's global, literally. We've got members from the islands of off of British Columbia to the mountains of India. And that wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't didn't have the technology that we have available to us that would by creating this space and this environment we can connect with people that we would probably not have had the same level of connection with before right and definitely not do it well that is awesome so with your toastmasters what what do you see the benefits of having it have this international flavor to it well one it gives a different perspective from you know just the way things are ha being handled in canada as opposed to the united states you know when you stand on the border there isn't much space between the two countries but there's a huge difference in the way that they are going about handling the, the current pandemic situation and the way that we are in the United States. And for the matter, for that matter, you know, the different states within the states are, are handling things differently. Yeah. And it, so it gives us a different perspective. It opens, allows us to experience something from not just our point of view, but to include other people's points of view. The other thing that it has done for us is that this club, as it is not bound by geography, can be bound more by interest. So our club, the World of Difference, is about is for coaches, authors, speakers, that type of person. So it's a, a mm. because I'm not bound by okay. Well, are you within twenty miles of the where we meet? I don't have to worry about that, and I can look for those people who are a, a better fit, personality wise, vocationally, mission wise, etc. So it's, it's nice to be able to do that. Yeah, I think that's really great because I've been in a Toastmasters group before too. And, um, you know, the, just a variety of, of people are in it and not necessarily, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, I never felt like I was with people that um, I shouldn't be with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just nice to be with folks who are closer to your industry, I think. Mm, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And so we can, you know, the, I think the level of conversation that we have, the relationship that we have, the engagement that we have is richer because we share more, have more things in common than if we were more of a disparate type of group. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm enjoying it and I have gotten really good feedback from a number of the members who are saying how much they appreciate it. So with regards to this technology that we have, what are some of the other ways that we can use it to build our business? What, what are the things, what are missed opportunities that you're seeing that with your background that others may be missing right now hmm. what are people missing well you know we we have all the traditional ways that we're used to seeing video you know using it on your website obviously to uh explain your product and service to talk about who you are testimonials uh, those sorts of things um and now people are really embracing live video i know you have been extremely embracing of that lately steve with all of your live things that you've been doing um 
I think the, you know, kind of uncharted territory that I'm seeing right now is that people are not taking advantage of LinkedIn. Mm. And LinkedIn now allows you to do live video. They also have a new events area where if you uh, create an event, you can invite up to a thousand people. Mm. Um, you know, there are all kinds of ways of business building there that are uh, really taking it up to a more professional level than what you're seeing on Facebook. Hmm. You know, we all have gotten very comfortable on Facebook. I think there are still things that uh, folks might not have explored fully, but they've kind of wet their feet in it. Uh, I think it's still very important to have a strong presence on Facebook. I think it's important to particularly be utilizing video in whatever form that feels comfortable. You know, if, if you want to create video content where you're not on the camera, that's fine. Mm. You just need to have a very strong message. Um, if you want to be doing the live stuff, um, I think it's time to refine that. I think it's time to professionalize it a little bit. I think people are getting a little bit tired of seeing you do a makeover in your bathroom. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. Yes. At, I at do. one point it was novel and, um, and now it's, almost too much information you know I'd, I'd rather you know hear a more robust message from you and um and just you know maybe in in different settings uh that type of thing i think that's important mm. um, but i think the most important thing that's come out of uh messaging during this pandemic is the need to be as authentic as possible mm. People are not looking for a polished, professional, highly produced video. They're looking for a real genuine, you know, message. And they're looking to see, you know, what's your life really like? You know, what, you know, we both have home offices, obviously, but most people don't, you know, so their laptop is set up in their kitchen or maybe they have a dining room or they're in their living room. And I think we're all fascinated to see what's in the background. You know, what does your house look like? And mm, yes. you know, when does your cat hop on onto your keyboard <laughs> and interrupt things? Um, or you have a kid that runs in or on occasion, I have a husband who comes in, thinks he can print things off the printer in my office. And <laughs> 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 so I, I think that natural um, humanity that comes out of videos and situations like that are really important right now but i Absolutely. also think content has always been important and we need to have a strong message we need to have something to say and so if you are utilizing you know the live technology of social media do it with clear intention mm -hmm. know before you go on that yes i think spontaneity is great but you need to know what you're going to say and you need to know why you're saying it and who your audience is. So if you can act with that kind of clarity, then you're going to be able to build engagement. You're going to be able to build an audience and eventually building your, your business. But if you come on willy nilly and you're just saying, Oh, I'm taking a walk today and it's so beautiful. And oh, I like, I can't believe it, but I saw a Brown bear. <laughs> you know okay that's that's showing one side of your humanity but it's not blending it with a strong message of why i need to listen to you mm, yes does that make yeah, sense absolutely you know and it, i don't think i think that there's a a talent or a skill set that comes from figuring out you know there are ways to use the brown bear in your video and your messaging but you have to be able to figure out ways to weave that in so that there is some harmony between what your message is and what the everyday experiences are. Right. Uh, and, and it goes back to your point earlier about practice. You know, the, the way that we get comfortable talking into the camera, the way that we get comfortable having these Zoom calls or Facebook Lives or being on LinkedIn or YouTube or wherever is through practice is, is through engaging in those things and, and building on them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been doing today was my 52nd Facebook live that I did on my Facebook page, my business page. 
I started back in the beginning of April, do it five days a week. And I learn a little bit more each time I do it. But when you brought up LinkedIn and YouTube, well, particularly LinkedIn and doing lives on there, or doing videos on there, I just felt my heart like drop a bit in, in my chest. And <laughs> like, <laughs> so do you have any tips as to, you know, how can we better be expanding our, our reach, reaching out to more people and engaging with people in ways that, that we're not doing right now? Like what, what, should we keep in mind when we're thinking about LinkedIn or YouTube or, or whatever other formats you might be able to provide some insight on? Sure. It, it doesn't really matter, you know, where you're doing the video in the first place. And it doesn't matter if you're doing a video or you're doing a live presentation. I think these are all really important elements, but engaging an audience in person, um, you know, science shows us that about every 10 minutes you need to do some type of direct engagement with your audience. Mm. They're finding online that the timing is every four minutes. Mm. People get distracted very easily and then they kind of go off and then they kind of come back. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what I've been sharing with people is just how important it is to engage people from the get go. As soon as you start your presentation, you have to have something really interesting out of the shoot for them to know, whether it's an interesting statistic that you're going to share, a uh, question you pose to them, um, you know, just something that really captures their interest and they start listening. And from there, you can start diving into your introduction or what have you, but then within four minutes, you need to do something again. Mm. So, you know, Zoom has great tools and the more that you utilize them, the more engaged your audience is gonna be. I strongly encourage people to be sure as you're speaking, you know, say, oh, hey, what do you think about this? Put it in the chat mm. and be sure to check the chat, take a moment to breathe, look down and see how people are responding respond to the responses mm. that's part of the conversation that's part of the relationship building and then come back you know to your presentation you can use the poll feature those are really fun you know you have the poll pop up on the screen everybody can see as everyone's answering it so you see all the lines squirreling and it's like <sighs> oh gosh who's going to say what and then you can engage in a conversation around the answer mm. You know, it's a really great launching off point for uh, discussion. Last week, I, I used it in a presentation I was doing with a couple of people where I found trivia questions, divided those up. So we used three of them about, oh, it was probably about 12 minutes into the presentation. We, we did three trivia questions, did another about 10 or 15 minutes of presentation, did more trivia questions. And then the final ones were in the last quarter of it. So that hour moved along really quickly. Mm. Nice. That's, you know, one way to do it. And and using, um, there are a bunch of online tools to do gaming during your presentation. You can use, uh, we have a one networking group where we uh, do a raffle every mm -hmm. month. And so online there is a, uh, it's like a wheel of fortune wheel. And everyone that has bought raffle tickets, their name gets put, you know, onto the right. Thing. Yes. You push the button. There are great sound effects, you know, so you hear tick, 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 boom. And then whoever wins, there's fireworks that go off around their name. Sure. You know, so fun stuff like that, um, I think is really important to incorporate. Um, and then I, I can't stress this enough and I don't see people using it often enough, but captions are really important for any video. And that mm. doesn't matter whether you're doing it live or you're doing a, something that you've edited and you're posting it. Um, incorporating captions helps people on several different levels. This is not just for folks who are hearing impaired. This is for people who are scrolling through social media and if they're seeing words, they'll stop to read. Mm -hmm. If they don't see words, 
and nothing's really catching their attention on the screen. They're just going to keep scrolling. Mm. And then for those who might want to pay attention, but they do have to, you know, take care of something on their desk, they can read while they're taking care of their things. You know, there are lots of different ways for the captioning to help. And then in a live presentation where you've got, you know, an audience, it will help keep them engaged because they'll keep reading to pay attention. You know, they're Mm. finding that, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember what the the number was now, but like 75% of people, you know, viewing movies now on Netflix have the captions turned on. Mm Mm-hmm. And again, it's not because they have any kind of impairment or disability. It's because it's just easier to be able to hear. I know in my household, you know, we watch a lot of things that are created by British uh, producers. So there's a lot of British accents that are difficult to understand. (laughs) And so (laughs) we keep the captions on. Um, I know my kids, when they watch their videos on netflix or youtube or wherever that they have i mean i i don't watch everything they watch but i know a a great deal of the time they have got the captions turned on and they have no problem well as a parent i sometimes wonder if they have problems hearing but but i they it's not a hearing problem right right Well, I know, you know, when my son was in school, uh, he has special needs. And one of the things that the, I forget whether it was speech, it must have been speech or occupational therapy. Um, You know, the person had recommended that we put captions on so he would read more. Mm. Um, I think globally, it helps all of us. Interesting. We stay on track. So I I think all of those things are important. And I think... um, you know, again, get into planning. If you're doing some sort of online event, think about it ahead of time and figure out pockets, you know, break up the content, maybe create an outline and figure out, okay, this looks like it'll be around 10 minutes into it. This will be about five minutes into it. What can I do at these intervals that will engage the audience? Sure. You know, you, know, you have me thinking about that right now is, you know, we've been on this, in this conversation for 30 plus minutes already. And I'm thinking about what could I do to, you know, at points in the middle where we're engaging the audience more, you know, maybe doing some polls or asking our audience member questions or, Mm -hmm. uh, but just as I was thinking about that, I, I realized, you know, when I talk with people who are really good at talking, who can talk nonstop, and that is not me, <laughs> although it might seem like that sometimes, uh, I get tired of that because I don't want to, I want to be engaged in the conversation. So if, if I want my audience to be more engaged with what I am delivering, then I need to give them opportunities so that they can deliver or engage with what I'm delivering, you know, and, and to mm-hmm. contribute to the conversation. Absolutely. And another trick, you know, if you're doing an event and you know a couple of your followers are going to be there, you know, maybe you've got a couple key clients that that are saying they're going to show up, ask them to think of questions or feed them questions, you know, have two or three, Mm. you know, pre figured out questions to give them so that they can put them into the chat at intervals when things get kind of quiet. Mm, yeah you know it's it's That's... really important to seed your audience and to um and not just have it be the one person that everyone expects you know <laughs> <laughs> if your wife shows it up or you know right best friend <laughs> that kind of thing can be a little bit awkward yes well that's great so i want to be mindful of all of our times and to break things up a little bit i have a couple of questions that I like to ask at the end of our conversation. And the first question I have is how can people connect with you, engage with you so that you, they can improve the quality of their video? 
You bet. So I can be found on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest. I think that's all. And uh, you can also reach me through my website, mindfulmediaservices.com. And you can email me at Marsha at mindfulmediaservices.com. And that's Marsha, M-A-R-C-I-A. Excellent. Yeah, and I'd love to. I always offer a thirty free 30-minute 30 uh, video discovery call for people who are just brainstorming, trying to figure out what would really be most effective for them in their business. Um, gives us an opportunity to evaluate where you are in your business, where you want to go, and uh, how video might help you. And if there's an opportunity that looks like I might be able to assist with, why I certainly share that. And uh, and then otherwise, I have a free handout that I'm sharing right now, how to five simple ways to engage your virtual audience. Mm. So if you're interested in that, we'll put the link in the um, Facebook. I, I don't have Facebook open at the moment, but I'll go back and put that in after we're done so that you can download that and uh, stay connected. Awesome. Thank you. And I downloaded that and you know found some great tips so i i endorse your oh good <laughs> your tip sheet that's, that's good to know <laughs> the next question i have for you is what in your mind makes for a richer story i think a rich story begins with really getting to the depth and heart of the challenge that someone has experienced. Mm -hmm. That's where you start touching other hearts and where people can relate. You know, maybe they haven't experienced exactly what you have, but they've experienced the depth of pain or the depth of frustration that you've gone through. Um, I think the best stories, you know, are, are built with kind of a hero in mind. Mm. You know, what, what challenge did you overcome? What, what did you have to cross? Did you bear, you know, to, to walk through life and come out the other end? Um, you know, people are always looking for that level of story. So that's, that's kind of what I think would probably be the most important thing. Just be sure that you're, you're touching on that heart space. Mm, yes. Yeah, that's so important that when we're willing to share our stories with other people and, you know, those Brene Brown talks about it a lot and, you know, it's really created a space for us to be able to, to be more vulnerable, but it, it makes a big difference. And it's surprising how oftentimes the stories that we think that will separate us will actually connect us with and engage Yes. with our audience absolutely so the last question i have for you is again re with regards to the stories how are you storing up richer stories for your audience how do you collect the stories that you share with your audience how do i collect <laughs> well i i live life um <laughs> i i've been um I've had the opportunity over the course of my life to, it feels like live four different lifetimes. <laughs> a lot of very, very rich experiences. Um, a lot of loss, a lot of pain, a lot of joy, a lot of, you know, incredible, incredible things. And I think um, what I try to do with my storytelling is, uh, well, like we talked about with the black bear, I, I don't, I, you know, I incorporate the metaphor, if it makes sense, right. or I share directly the experience, but how does that relate to moving forward or growing a business or, you know, uh, some element of, of video production? Um, I always try to, uh, share personal along with the professional mm. because i i would hope that if i've done anything well with my business it's i've shown my humanity in it and i've you know admitted oh yeah 
I don't like being on camera. You know, I, I hate being in front because I spent most of my life behind cameras. Mm. But once I had my own business, it was very apparent that I had to be in front. People needed to know who I was and why they needed to work with me as opposed to the 50 million other video producers in the world. You know, you either relate or you don't. So um, I think that's probably um, the best way I can sum it up, Steve. I think it's, you know, it's I've had a wealth of experience on many levels, personally and professionally. And I do my best to share that as I'm out in the world telling my stories. Absolutely. I know one of the the pieces of advice that I've read and seen and experienced a lot is that in order to write good stories, live a rich life, right? That it, it's not just keeping your fingers at the keyboard or, you know, your face in front of the camera or whatever, but it's going out and living a rich life so that you can create the stories that you want to be creating. Mm -hmm. I think that's really true. And I, as you said that, I thought, you know, I remember being in my 20s feeling like I was this wise woman. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so grateful in my 60s to be able to say, boy, I didn't know much <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of learning to be done. And mm -hmm. the, with all that learning and living, we have more stories to share with our audience. Yeah, and, and just a wealth of knowledge base you know and all absolutely stuff. Help, yeah help them get to where they want to go yeah, yeah. I'm well thank you yeah. thank you marcia for enlightening me and enlightening our audience and in conclusion i'd just like to to invite those of you out there to you know engage with your audience, use this video technology to connect with people that you wouldn't otherwise connect with. Mm -hmm. And the more that we connect with each other, the richer and more brilliant and beautiful of the world becomes. Mm -hmm. And to help with that, I have these stories of gold conversations each week with an expert like Marsha to make your journey in being the, the word warriors that you are, to master your craft and develop your skill. So until our stories meet again, be the bright light in someone's dark night. Ta-ta. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.